this tiny little router bit is gonna change the way you build subwoofer boxes forever. That's because flat is boring. Every guy knows curves are so much better. You can make bendable plywood like this with a method called kerfing. But kerfing is a pain in the ass. Don't take my word for it. I did a poll. Most of you have never tried it and a little more than half of you that did try it said it's a pain in the ass. This little router bit makes it foolproof. Let's see it in action. So everything's set up and ready to go. I got my workpiece clamped down, did all that off camera. And now what I'm going to do is set the router up and I'm going to be using this thing right here. This is a setup block. I'll give you a link to it down in the video description. And we're going to put that setup block right here on my table, right next to my workpiece, or this is a piece the same thickness as my workpiece. Then I'm gonna position the router so it's right on the edge of the workpiece, loosen this screw right here and move the stop to its lowest setting. Then I'm gonna plunge it down till I hit the setup block. So that's a 16th of an inch setup block. But right now I'm set to my maximum depth. So none of this goofing around with a saw blade trying to find the lowest point. It's probably a good idea to do this in multiple passes. So we're gonna use a second setup block. So once again, we're just gonna plunge down. Then we spin this little depth stop. Everything is set up here. I've got my lines drawn. Now I've got to get the router ready to go. The goal here is to get this really sharp bit right on that line. Okay, with the bit right on the line, you take a couple of squares. and then clamp everything down. If you're not careful, the router will try to walk away from you if you use just one straight edge. So I recommend using two straight edges. Make sure that you clamp down both ends of both straight edges. I'm gonna make two passes through the material. This first pass is about half depth. Then I'm gonna adjust the depth stop and make the second pass at full depth. From there, it's just a matter of repeating the process until you've finished all of your kerf cuts. Make sure when you're clamping to put the clamps like this so the bar is pointing down instead of like this when the bar is pointing up or else you'll hit the handles on your router. While we're making those cuts, I wanna take a second to say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. I could not afford to run this channel without direct support from viewers just like you. So thank you to my patrons with a big bonus shout out to Jonathan, Taylor, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. All right, so it's all finished. Before we do the moment of truth and actually bend it, we gotta clear the dust out. As you can see, it leaves quite a bit of dust in the cracks. I'm not sure the best way to clear that dust out. If you bend it backwards, it opens the channels up, but bending it backwards is how you break them. Maybe a flathead screwdriver will help clear it out. Yeah, there you go. Just now thought of this, flathead screwdriver. That seems as good as any method. Awesome. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if it worked or not. Before I do that though, I wanna give you a quick preview of what I'm working on. This box right here. Check out this big massive curve right here for this really cool box. That is a kicker comp Q, y'all. That is an 800 watt 10 inch subwoofer. It is beefy AF. I can't wait to hear how this is gonna sound. Okay, the cuts look perfect. Now it's time for the stressful part and that is actually doing the bend. This is a <laughs> moment of truth, right? Either it works or it doesn't. Okay, that sounded terrible, but it always makes that sound. So just relax. That sound scares the hell out of you, makes you think you screwed it up. Okay, we're getting there. Look at that. Look at the way those gaps close right up. Let's see if we can bend it on over to 90 degrees. Okay, it sounded terrible. That sounded terrible. One more left to go. And we got it. Yes. Awesome. I made seven cuts, but I think I can get away with six because with seven cuts, you bend well past 90 degrees. 90 degrees is more like that. I'll have to experiment with that off camera and see how well it works. What I love about this method is the way that the gaps all close up. And when those gaps close up, you're gonna get a great glue joint. What I don't like is on the back side here, 
it makes these ridges. With MDF, you can sand that down. I'm not sure how it's gonna look if you sand the plywood. I know what you're thinking. Why not just use a circular saw? Well, a circular saw is gonna make a straight cut into the wood, and when you bend the wood, it's gonna leave a gap. That gap is gonna weaken your glue joint, so you're gonna get a stronger joint using a tapered router bit. Also, you gotta make more passes with a circular saw, and more passes means more opportunities to make a mistake. Plus, it's just easier to set up the plunge depth on a router versus trying to get the depth exactly right on a circular saw. And if you already got a router, why not spend a few bucks on this bit? There's a link to the bit down in the video description. This bit is an absolute game changer. You're gonna be able to make so many cool things with this tool. Look how cool this is. Can you imagine like a slim behind the seat box that was curf cut? The possibilities are just endless. I like to give credit where credit is due. I'm not the first person to ever think about using a bit like this to make curf cuts. Woodworkers have been doing this for a while. I got the idea from someone I follow on Facebook, Obnoxious Boxes. This is only my second attempt trying this with the router and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The first attempt, I only used one edge guide and that didn't work as well. So it's worth it to take the extra time to set up the second edge guide. Also keep in mind that these things are fragile. If you bend them the wrong direction, they will break. So don't do that. You're probably asking yourself, if I've only done this twice, how do I have all these samples laying around? That's because I've only done it twice with the router. The rest of the time I use this big expensive monster back here. And let me tell you, that's the way to go. This is so much easier. The actual cutting time on the router versus the CNC machine is really about the same because there's a lot of setup time in between cuts. And of course, you don't have to be there when the machine's cutting, you can go do something else. I like to put on some good noise canceling headphones and clean the shop while the machine's working because my shop's always a damn mess. And it's too hot out here to keep doing this. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.